Good morning my darlings and welcome to a brand new vlog. It's Friday morning and we have got a shoot day here at the house today. Charlie has got Jake coming over to shoot some content um, that Charlie needs so I will probably steal a little bit of Jake's time as well and get some snaps in. We've also got a few projects that we're working on on the home Instagram account so yeah today is a content creation day. I'm not ready as you can tell I literally just threw on one of of my Amazon dresses because I've got a few bits and bobs that I need to do this morning first of all. So the first thing that I need to do this morning is package up some of my shoes. I have been up to my dressing room and rummaged around for shoes that are in need of a little bit of love and I'm actually going to be sending these over to the restory which promises to bring them back to life so I'll I don't think it's bad luck to put old shoes on the table is it only new shoes um, so I'll show you how these shoes look before and then when they come back I'll show you how they look afterwards so my wonderful much beloved Chloe boots Really the only thing here is scuffing on the toe and it's not that bad but I feel that if it could be repaired then they'll look good as new again because when you invest in nice quality footwear like Chloe boots you definitely want them to last a long time if not forever <laughs> um, so yes I thought it'd be a good idea to send them to get a little bit of TLC. And then, what a beautiful sight, we have a basket bag full of Valentino Rockstud sandals. As you probably have noticed, these are by far my most worn footwear in my entire wardrobe. They look beautiful when you wear them, they are the perfect heel height, but oh my goodness, how scruffy they are. So these are my most, most, most worn, the raffia ones. I would actually buy another pair of these if I saw them again. I got them in the sale and I think they were a very limited batch, but you you can see the toe area is just, well, dirty and very well worn. The heels are very scuffed and battered. Um, and actually the toe section is unfortunately starting to peel away. So not ideal. Hopefully the restory can give a lot of love to these. Um, the white ones equally, I think with these they are just more worn away like the sole is very crinkled gosh it's actually a really gross way to start the vlog isn't it showing you my very battered shoes um yeah so just very tired looking and my gold ones these were actually oop, these were my first valentino rock stud sandals again just super worn down but when you spend this much money on sandals you want to get loads of wear out of them and i do want to bring them back to life so i'm going to package these all up and send them to rest to the restory and yeah, I'll keep you posted. We've got some crazy lighting. I'm actually not going anywhere. I'm just turning my car around because um, I had it charging down by the coach house. We are getting a proper charging unit put in, um, but for now I'm just charging it from like a three pin electric plug, which is not ideal because it's quite slow, but I have been driving everywhere purely on electric lately, which is fantastic. How long have I had the car now? Like three weeks? Obviously we were away for, <laughs> for the first five days, but I have only put petrol in this car once and um, we have done a lot of journeys. We've been to we've been to our friends that live an hour away, there and back. Oh my gosh, we've even driven down to Chichester for Goodwood. We've driven to Charlie's mum and dad's, which is an hour and a half away, um, all on one petrol tank and hybrid, so and electric so we are doing well. Well I've just bid farewell to my car because when we picked it up, um, long story short, it needed just a tiny little amend to be made so luckily the guys at Porsche and um, the garage where we bought it from have come to the house, collected it and we should get it back hopefully today but I have to show you <laughs> the car that they have left me with. It is, um, let's just say, my brother would absolutely love this car and it looks a little bit like a frog so you know how i said i always wanted a green car 
Not quite sure this is the colour green that I had in mind, but this is my little frog for the day. This is a Macan, which is um, slightly smaller than my car. V6 3 litre engine. It is literally, in my opinion, a lad's car. <laughs> but let's have a little look inside. My goodness. We have got black leather seats with a bright green trim. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, look at the color of the seat belts. It's now a few hours later. We've had a busy shoot day here at the house today and I didn't film any of it aside from potentially a time lapse at lunchtime and I'm amazed that my camera did not fall into the um, water trough while I left it there because it was so windy and I completely forgot that it was there. But very productive shoot with Jake today. We had some more deliveries arrive while we were shooting and this one in particular, or these, these ones here, I have been waiting for for so long. I actually placed this order with um, a website called Mrs. Alice back in May um, and I was getting a little bit worried because I didn't even receive a confirmation email and nearly actually yeah nearly two months went by still didn't receive anything so after <laughs> messaging them a few times the order finally arrived but actually not everything. I still don't have everything. It's, yeah it's been it's been quite the struggle to get this, so I'm really hoping it's going to be worth it. Uh, I don't I, think anything can be worth that experience, that's terrible. I know, it's not ideal. Not ideal. Beautifully packaged, so yeah, let's, let's hope that the items in here are gorgeous and worth the wait. But actually, first, before I open that stuff, I'll show you the other bits that arrived. Um, so a lovely little gift from Nice Cream London. I always wear their silk hair bubbles and they have released their mini silk hair bubbles in these beautiful greeny shades. We've got a deep kind of khaki green, um, a really fresh like eucalyptusy green, a very kind of festive emerald green and more of a bright green. Speaking of green, the green Porsche Macan has now gone home. I didn't even get to drive it anywhere because they have bought my car back again. Really quick turnaround, great service from them. Um, and they even washed it for me, which is great. And then my other delivery today, I placed this order a couple of days ago. I was very much influenced by our lovely neighbour, friend and gardener, Jack, who is a Cotswold country bird on Instagram. She posted a screenshot that she had placed a big sweet pea order and I thought, I'm gonna do the same. And this year I plan on autumn sowing my sweet peas so that hopefully I have a lot more flowers earlier on next year. So uh, this is a website called Roger Parsons Sweet Peas and I must say Roger has the most incredible selection of sweet peas, nice to support small businesses as well and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I ordered fourteen different kinds of sweet pea and yeah as soon as I've got my greenhouse autumn is going to be busy because I've also placed a massive Sarah Raven um, bulb order the other day for things like white alliums, um, some beautiful tulips so all of those have to get planted in September so it's going to be a busy autumn for planting. I do like the uh, ribbon and the packaging of these Mrs Alice pieces. Okay, all unpackaged and the pieces that have arrived so far, I'm still waiting for, I'll pop a picture on the screen here, this lovely um, scalloped rattan tray. I did order a non-scalloped version from Amazon. I'll probably show you some of my Amazon purchases um, tomorrow because I have got some fun things lately. But, so I ordered this little trio, this is two and three of these wicker 
uh, kind of bud vases. When I'm making my flower displays, I love to have little bud vases, especially if you've got some blooms which you don't have a huge amount of. So for example, I've got the sweet peas that I collected from the garden yesterday in this little glass vase, which looks lovely. But equally, I thought they would look really nice in these little wicker vases as well. Um, and the good thing is they've got a solid container inside so you can put water in them which is very important because um, otherwise obviously <laughs> the flowers would not last very long so I think these will look really pretty just for something slightly different on my tablescapes I'm always looking for things to make my tablescapes look lovely and at this time of year especially I could literally every single day bring in at least five vases and ten bud vases of flowers from the garden so the more vases the better Oh, sweet peas smell incredible if you didn't see to the end of my last vlog I was saying that I think my sweet peas have like merged with each other in the ground because I planted pink sweet peas and I planted jubilee sweet peas which are the ones if I focus it like this petal here where they're mostly white but they have got lilac around the edges they are the jubilee sweet peas but my sweet peas have become like a hybrid so they're pink and jubilee um which is rather special. I think they look lovely, so I might save some of the seed pods for these, and then they'll be our very own old rectory <laughs> style sweet pea. And then I also ordered um, these as, again, little bud vases. If we have loads of things which are a bit more full, like Cosmos, I think they'll look great in this. So this evening, after we've had dinner, I'll do my usual garden walk and fill up my new vases with blooms from the garden. Well, after a very blusterous day, the sun is starting to come out, so I think I'm going to head outside and do a little bit of gardening now before we make our dinner. Okay, so my first gardening task for today is actually to set up this micro drip system outside on the flower bed, outside my greenhouse. Obviously, everything grows so much better if it is well watered, but most things prefer to be watered from the root level as opposed to with a hose pipe just sprayed over the top of them so these irrigation systems are really really useful and also you can just turn the hose pipe on and then walk away you can even connect this up to a kind of timer if you so desire so this is the micro drip system from gardena comes with everything you need to set it up so i've got the pipes um, which i believe you can just snip with a pair of scissors and then you've got all of the things which um wedge it down into the soil, connect it to your hose pipes. So hopefully this will help all the plants to grow big and strong outside the greenhouse. So I am gonna spend 10 minutes having a little look through the instructions and setting this up. And then hopefully I can just turn it on and let the drip system do all the hard work for me. Okay, 10 minutes later, and that was actually surprisingly easy to set up. I thought it was going to be more complicated than it actually was. Um, so if you are setting up a herbaceous border at home, or you've got some vegetable beds or some pots that need continual watering, because pots definitely need more watering than anything that grows from the ground, um, then this is a really fantastic idea. I think you can actually order this set direct from Amazon. So basically, this will connect into your hose pipes. You can just constantly have it plugged in if you want and have it on a timer, or you can manually turn your hose pipe on. And then what I did was cut up the pipe, which you can see here, just with a normal pair of scissors, my gardening scissors, and you get all of these different connectors in your um, micro drip box. And then you basically just cut the hose pipe, put it together like a bit of a jigsaw and add it into your borders. You can see I've run it down here between the salvia and the lavender. And you can use these little pegs that come with it to make sure that it stays in the right place. And it comes with this very clever little tool this one here, I can show you an example. This is a bit of spare pipe. And essentially you pierce the hose pipe wherever you need there to be water. So just create a little hole like this. And then when you turn the hose on, it just gradually drips water into your beds. So you can see there's some patches down here underneath a little bush um, where the holes are a little bit bigger, whereas lavender doesn't want quite so much watering. So I've spread the holes out a little bit further along this one. And then I just twisted the pipe round so that the holes are facing downwards because um, when you are watering flowers, it's better to get the water to the roots as opposed to on the actual leaves. Um, saves a lot more water that way, saves evaporation. 
Oh, and then these are the little end pieces. You can see there's some little end nodules here. And actually, when you look from above, you can barely see the pipework. We obviously should have done this when the plants were a little bit smaller, but now that they're growing out, it's already hidden. So any future beds that we put in, we'll put this pipework in straight away. So yeah, I thought I would share that with you, a little irrigation hack. I've got plenty of pipe left over. Um, I think you get 40 meters. Yeah, which is a lot with this micro drip system. So very impressed with this homemade irrigation setup. I'll leave it linked um, in the description box down below. Okay, my next gardening task is to pull together some little bud vases with my new um, wicker vases. And I've also just realized I've not shown you our new furniture set yet. So this is our new set. It's a shame I'm not showing you on a brighter evening. <laughs> it's rather overcast. Um, but yeah, this lovely set from Oxenwood, which is looking a little bit scruffy at the moment because it's been sat on all afternoon. We wanted somewhere that we could come and enjoy a morning coffee or just a slightly more informal and comfortable area to be outside. As you know, Charlie and I spend most of our time when it's not raining outside. Um, and oh, look at my bunny rabbit. Dicky baby. Obviously having the dining table here is perfect. We use it so much. We sit out here so very often, but we did want somewhere a little bit more informal, a little bit more comfortable. And Oxenwood really is the best quality and um, style of furniture for this space. And they're really quite unique in the marketplace. We searched high and low for some alternatives, potentially some which were a little bit more affordable because it really is so expensive. Um, but there's just nothing else like it. There is definitely a gap in the market for something similar, but yeah, beautiful oak pieces and they will silver up over time. I think this little table is probably temporary. We got that from I think Station Mill Antiques but for now it's perfect just for resting your coffee or your bud vases. I've reached a point now where I'm not sure whether to add any more or just stop here. This is always where you could get really carried away, but actually I really love how they look. Um, oh, this is what I just love about flower arranging. It's become such a hobby of mine and a real love. Every day when I finish doing my bits for work, I just love coming out and evaluating the garden, seeing what's ready to be picked, and it's always changing. If you guys have been watching along the vlogs, you'll notice that they're just always changing. It's really ever since I did that course at Dalesford, the flower arranging course, that this love has come about. Um, but yeah, really like how these look. Again, as usual, I've gone for a white, green, and purple theme, and we've got some really lovely bits in here. This, I think, is actually a weed i saw it growing around by the pond um but it's kind of like a mini cow parsley but the structure is this fennel like structure can you see if i put my hand behind it there that i absolutely love we've got some geraniums which we have masses of can you see them overflowing onto the pathway down there Ooh, the sun's coming out. Uh, cat mint is a favourite of mine now that the salvia is dying back. Really nice addition to these little bud vases. These are some mini alliums that Charlie actually planted the bulbs of last September. And I wasn't sure that I loved them, but I really like the structure that they add. And then we've got, again, some alcamilla, which is a new favourite of mine in my displays because it's such a vibrant colour. And, oh, thank you, sunshine. Uh, in this one, I've kept it a little bit more white and green Again, this weed flower. I'll take a photo of it now and see what it actually is. And some cosmos. So they look absolutely beautiful. And I think it really suits the wicker vases. So yeah, now I just need to decide where they're going to live. down to the kitchen garden after dinner and Charlie's showing me another of his purchases. The light down here at the moment is absolutely gorgeous. As you can see, the brolly is actually not doing anything to create shade on the table. It is more there for ambiance. But what is your jazzy purchase down here? Well, this is actually from Oka. Mm -hmm. um, and this is what I was referencing when the other parasol was delivered. Yeah. Because this was obviously a much uh, more affordable price point. Yeah and the guys that delivered it were father and son from Oka 
and they were like, oh, let's unpackage it for you. They took all the packaging away, they left it here. They were just really lovely. Yeah. Whereas the delivery for that other parasol, as we know, was a little bit chaotic. <laughs> um, so it was nice. This is but, actually yeah, really nice. Did you say the brolly is quite um, a cheapie? Well, this, this brolly is from that Gardenesque website. Right. Which, weirdly, I ordered it from Gardenesque. Yeah. Um, and then the following week we went to Chelsea Flower Show. Uh -huh. I bumped into a guy that's a couple of years above me at school. Yeah. And he founded Gardenesque. Oh! Him and his wife own the website. That's crazy. Um, it's it's good quality. It's not the best ever, but mm -hmm. it's also very handy because it folds in half. Look. Yeah, so and you know if you take it on like a beach day... It's got a screw thing in the bottom. Oh, nice hat, mate. So look, it's also got that uh -huh. on the bottom. I would never do in the lawn, but in the sand or something. Yeah. Would probably be quite handy. Yeah. I mean, actually, no, it is good quality. It is good quality. I like the, it. It looks the, lovely. The London Parasol one is... Better East quality. London Parasol one is outstanding quality, but... Yeah. I mean, this is really handy if you've got a smaller garden as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it comes in a nice little bag. This is a this is a purchase, by the way. We've not been... <laughs> sent it. should have waited. Yeah. Maybe my mate would have sent me one. Maybe. But yeah, garden-esque that's from. Lovely. I like the green colour as well. And this is the best time of the evening because all the plants are backlit by the sun. What is that one there, darling? What, the red pink flower? The one that looks a little bit thistly. I actually don't know. It's lovely, isn't know. it? It's on the map. It's on the thing. We've, we've actually got that growing naturally over oh, there. Wow. I didn't plant that. Wow. I think a bird maybe planted it. And then we've got the flocks. Beautiful. Which is there, though wildflower turf looking extremely wild um gladioli is starting to come up sorry about this quality by the way if it's quite rubbish i'm filming on my phone and my beans are coming up nicely this one's really winding its way around and another windy windy up here we've got quite a lot of action with the pumpkins and the courgettes blowing beautifully in the wind. You can see some little round courgettes coming through there. captures the light really perfectly. We're just heading up for a quick evening at dog walk. Charlie's just gone to grab the watering can. Um, but this is the field opposite our house and it is uh, just so magical. I really wish <laughs> the field would be exactly the same as this next year because imagine having wedding photos in here. <gasps> Do you know what? I think I'm going to post a picture of this on our village Facebook group so that anyone that's getting married in the village this year comes into this field for their photos because it is just so stunning, especially at this time of day. The wheat or barley, I'm still not too sure, just glows. And the views, oh my gosh, can't quite get over the views. You have these big, wide pathways that the farmer has made for the public footpath. Let me show you. I think it might have just gone behind the church, but the sun is streaming through here earlier. Oh, just looks so magical. How lucky are we to have this on our doorstep? It is now Saturday morning. What an amazing evening last night. I was getting a little bit emotional on our evening walk because it's just so beautiful in the field. I posted some stories, I posted a TikTok. Honestly, I could not stop taking photos because 
I just wanted to share how beautiful it was. So hopefully I managed to capture that somewhat in the video clips you'll have just seen. So today's Saturday morning, unfortunately it's a little bit rainy today, but it's fine because we are going to do a little bit of antique shop, a uh, bit of an antique shop crawl. Um, I think we might head to Burf and Burford Garden Company, but we're definitely heading it to our favorite station mill antiques. So it's gonna be a nice wholesome day, even though the weather isn't perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. We were meant to be, we did originally say we'd go to the pit kitchen or try the pit kitchen again tonight and it is meant to improve. So there's my weather forecast for the day. And this morning, as you'll have just seen, I'm having a little bit of pamper. I like to have a proper at-home pamper, I would say every other weekend. And it's always great if it's miserable outside because then I just feel like I wanna be warm, I wanna be inside and getting myself ready for sunnier days. So as you'll have just seen, I used my laser at home IPL device. This is the one from Jovs, J-O-V-S, which I got from the Current Body website. If my Current Body discount code is still active, I will leave it on the screen here. I've been using this now for three or four months. Um, I'm a huge fan of at home IPL laser hair removal because it just means you're always hair free. I've mentioned laser hair removal many times here on my channel before but just as a quick overview you basically have to shave the area before you laser it in my opinion it's completely pain free i know some people feel a little bit of a sensation um and it does lead to a lot less hair growth on my legs in particular i've actually never experienced total hair um removal on my underarms and bikini i have and i really just do this like once a month as a top up in those areas but on my legs i don't find that it just being completely honest i don't find that it completely gets rid of my leg hair but it definitely makes it a lot lighter a lot finer and it doesn't bother me quite so much if i go like a week without shaving my legs not that you have to be hair free of course it's just my personal choice this one i find really good i love how it looks it's very sleek it feels really good quality it has lots of these different um heads which you magnetize on here you change the head based on the area whether you're doing your face you can actually do your upper lip you can do your underarms bikini legs wherever you want and you can change the filter so that it's the perfect light spectrum for that area and yeah, for me it is my hair removal method of choice and I've been really loving using this device. It's a lot better quality um, than devices that I have tried here at home in the past. Another bit of technology that I'm gonna be trying out today is something that my hairdresser, hairdresser Bernie recommended at Michael Van Clark and it is the Remington um, curler set. So I'm going to give my hair a quick blast again in a second to make sure it's completely dry and then we'll give those a go. And you may know from previous vlogs I'm obsessed with my current body LED face mask, the silicone face mask which has the LED lights, great for brightening, great for helping with the collagen and anti-aging benefits for your skin and they have now bought out one for the eye area in particular which is most definitely um, the area that I have the most requirement for pampering let's just say so i'm really intrigued to try this looks like teenage mutant ninja turtle style goggles oh my gosh this is literally a first impressions unboxing wow so i guess it i guess you wear it like one of those sleep eye masks let me just take a moment to understand all of this i've got major deja vu right now because i feel like i tried to I came to do a first impressions with something else for you not that long ago and also had to charge it. So the device is now charging. It does need an hour and a half. So I'm gonna have to try it out this evening, which is probably better because I do tend to do more of my LED facial work in the evenings after my evening cleanse because you're not meant to have any SPF on when you are using an LED. Um, but it's got a diagram here that shows you how LED light penetrates further into the dermis. So it actually works on all the different layers of your skin as opposed to just the top layers. And I've said before that I notice the most difference on facials that include LED light therapy. So the fact that I'm able to get these benefits from home 
and far more affordably than going continually for facials for me is really appealing. So the Current Body LED Eye Perfector is an LED light emitting diode device that harnesses energy to reduce the signs of aging around the eye area, incorporating natural light energy in amber, red and deep red and infrared spectrums to help reduce fine lines and wrinkles. Over time, our skin produces less collagen, and with exposure to sunlight, healthy collagen becomes damaged, which can result in wrinkles, especially around the eye, causing these little crow's feet. The light from the device penetrates deep within the layers of the skin to stimulate collagen production. So it automatically turns off after the three minute treatment. You can use it daily, that's amazing. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is gonna become a new part of my daily routine, I love it. And I love that it's only three minutes. So you've got these little eye covers here so it doesn't actually damage your eyes. Or you could actually do it in the morning while you are listening to a meditative soundtrack. That's actually a really nice idea. Nice to take that little bit of me time or before bed while you're waiting for your foot cream to sink in. You know, I love to multitask. Um, but yeah, it does need charging, so very much looking forward to trying that out later. Right, I'm gonna pop my bits away and let's give these rollers a try. Okay, so I have now unboxed and plugged in my hair rollers. I've actually never used heated rollers before, but I'm willing to try anything, basically. Oh, I can smell them heating up. I haven't left any plastic on, have I? No, <laughs> it's probably just because it's the first time. Um, but yeah, I've not been finding that my heatless waves have been lasting slash working at all recently. And I obviously can't complain, but my hair is really, really silky at the moment. I think it's the shampoo and conditioner that I'm using. And so the heatless curls and anything that doesn't include much heat just does not seem to be working in my hair right now. If my hair is a little bit um, less silky, then it tends to hold a start a little bit better. So once these are heated up, um, I'm gonna section out my hair, pop them in, fingers crossed, it says it only takes five to 10 minutes, during which time I'll do my makeup. If this works, I think it could be a bit of a game changer because it's obviously not using quite as much heat as if I was to use a curling wand or straighteners with my hair, so fingers crossed. I stopped filming because I started to get very frustrated. As you can see, I look a little bit like an Oompa Loompa mixed with a Teletubby at the moment. Um, and as we are heading out <laughs> in like 15 minutes, I did rush this quite a lot. So I definitely have not given this the best opportunity for my first impressions. Um, and I just, I've just got a sneaky feeling it's not gonna have worked. So I will try it again another time when I have got a little bit more time to put them in properly, give them maybe an hour to set. I think that would be ideal. It's probably been about 10 minutes since I put them in. And that, that technically that is what it says in the booklet. It says five to 10 minutes. So let's see, I'll start from the bottom. Well, the hair has completely cooled. We've got a nice little curl there, potentially not going in the right direction, but never mind. At least they're nice big curls. Well, the curls are certainly there. They're not particularly, um, then fairly nice big curls. They do feel very soft, so I'm not sure how long they're going to last. I feel like I'm being really negative. Um, it's just because I know I've not put in my full effort here. But what I would normally do with my heatless curls is use a wide toothed comb to brush them through. Well, I'm not gonna lie, they don't look great. But as I said, the effort that I put in was really quite minimal, literally a three out of 10. Um, and I can see that there is potential here for some really good curls. So I'm gonna stick with it. I don't really care today. As I said, literally just pottering around, pottering around a few antique shops. Doesn't need to look fabulous and it is still raining outside. Um, but let's see how long at least the volume and the shape lasts because imagine if you did this well, it could potentially be amazing. It doesn't look bad, they just look like, you know, it just kind of looks like I don't know how to curl my hair because they're just moving in the wrong directions. But I'm gonna give it a spray. 
and let's not keep Charlie waiting any longer. He's watching the rugby, but I know he's keen to get out of the house. So let's head to Chipping Norton. Well, I feel like there was a time that we came here every weekend, but we haven't been for two months, maybe? No, I think probably only a month. Really? Yeah, Feels like I've, forever. Maybe I've been here since. Maybe, but I'm looking forward to mooching around because there's probably lots of new stuff that I haven't seen yet. We've We're been here house. for less than a minute and actually this is going to be amazing for growing pumpkins and potentially beans up. Plant supports are always very useful. This is cute. Oh, that is very sweet. It's a good size for seedlings actually. Can you get it? Well, annoyingly, I need one with a rose on it. I know, we both, yeah, both that would come in handy really. Mm. Loads of containers here for planting. That would make a nice water speech, right? It actually. would, yeah. Yeah, this is a nice dolly tub, it's quite pricey though. But they come up of, so much in price. I've kind of gone off dolly tubs. Well, I think we've got enough. We definitely do. <gasps> look at the Harrods picnic basket. Oh, wow, look. Is that oh, an old bowling oh, ball? ball. No, it's ball. Uh, well, it's um, bowls, sorry. Bowls. Oh, is this a butcher's block? Yeah. Oh no, it's actually a proper workman's bench. If I didn't already have a potting table ready to go in my greenhouse, this would be perfect. It's so aged with the, I always say it wrong, lichen on top. This lovely metal base looks a little bit like a sewing machine table. And this lovely unit over here with the marble edging. There's almost like a painting underneath. You never know what you're going to find in here. We've spotted a vintage, very shiny fire hydrant and a pyramid of different rolling pins. That would be very wonderful in a big old fashioned kitchen. That's quite a nice job. again as you can see and hear and this is a very special church bell ringing in the background this is the wedding bells and it's actually the daughter of one of mum's friends and I'm very pleased that the rain has stopped so that she's got sunshine as she leaves the church so let me show you what we picked up from the station mill antiques with the lovely soundtrack in the background they always have a really good selection of plant pots and they had this cluster of mixed sized terracotta pots, really nice old ones, some with <laughs> some moss still attached. I just plan on starting all my seedlings next year in little terracotta pots. So the more the merrier. They had loads of garden antiques this time, so I picked up this little um, fork, which will be quite nice for decorative purposes, but also very useful. I need to take all the price tag strings off everything. And then this little trio of bud vases. They always come in so handy when I'm picking my flowers in the evenings. A really nice size and shape for my tablescapes. And I just thought this basket was a really sweet size. Um, not sure what I'm gonna keep in there, but um, no doubt that'll come in very useful. And then let's head down towards the church. As you might have seen when we were in the store, this is a really huge plant stand and my and I actually only found out last year that pumpkins like to climb and if they climb up then it saves space on the bed so I thought I would try to encourage my pumpkins gosh they're so loud that I'd try to encourage my pumpkins to grow up here this year um, and then we also spotted a nice big watering can with a rose attached, which again is great for, especially when you're feeding your um, seedlings. How has that spider already made a web between these two beds? Who knows? I've also realized this year, I've not, I've only planted one courgette plant, and I think all the others are pumpkins. So come September, October, this is just going to be a giant pumpkin patch down here. But we have got, gosh, it's actually grown since I came out a few hours ago this morning. I've got my first courgette. 
that's starting to grow here. Well, after a slightly wet and miserable day, it's turned into a really lovely evening and I've brought a vase half filled with water down to the front border. Oh, is this an egg? How oh, funny. Yes, I've brought my scissors and vase down to the front border and look at it. Oh my gosh, this is really lovely light actually to come down here. The grass is just illuminated by the sun the clematis on the wall and these beautiful, very old-fashioned kind of roses. Look at that, so beautiful. Dexy is just fascinated by the bumblebees. You won't like it if you try to bite him. Uh, uh, no, leave it, please. Um, and the hydrangeas are just looking sensational. For anyone that doesn't remember, Charlie and I put in this entire border. It literally was just a wall covered in ivy and grass all the way up to the wall. So all of these flowers that Charlie and I put in last um, May. And oh my gosh, I still have not done that blog post <laughs> about how to put in and how to install a herbaceous border. But I promise you, promise, promise, promise that it will be up by the time this video goes live. I'm actually gonna do it while I have my coffee tomorrow morning. A few of my favourites in this border, of course, the Alcamilla, the Hydrangeas, Limelight and Annabelle. We've got a climbing hydrangea up on the wall here, and also the Verbena, which gives it the height. A wonderful perennial, the cat mint, the grasses for the texture, but it's really important that you plan the colours plan it out so that everything is nicely spaced. You can see we've got the purples all nicely spread out, the grasses at all the different intervals just to give it texture. Oh, and it's perfect for picking, for bringing into the house in bud vases. So I'm gonna transfer this into my new bud vases that I picked up from Station Mill. Another of my recent Amazon purchases are these plant supports. They're particularly good for hydrangeas, which when the heads get wet, they can get quite heavy and they can flop over and, um, they can snap or they just look a little bit sad. So these, they start off silver, but after a little while they'll rust up. Well, it's very well hidden. You can barely see it, but I've popped a support just here to prop up these alliums. Cause again, they were getting a little bit floppy as modeled by Dexter. We're just gonna find some slightly bigger ones for the hydrangeas, but to keep the alliums from flopping over, these ones have done the perfect job. And there we go, the bud vases are filled with a few of my favourite blooms from the garden from this evening. I also bought up a few very juicy looking radishes. So we've got some cosmos in this one here alongside the cat mint. And this is one of the, um, I think they are called the alcamilla. We've got a ginormous one here. Charlie planted this down in the kitchen garden um, behind the rhubarb forces and they look really beautiful. They're growing really well at the moment. So I've got a few different um, stems of that and then the blooms from the front border and the alcamilla and now i just need to decide where they're going to live decided to turn this into a three-day vlog because 
I don't feel like I've filmed very much so far. So you're joining me this morning in the pink bedroom. Don't know if you can see very much of it. Um, this is, I think this is probably my favorite room in the house actually. I always feel very calm in here. It's, no one really comes in here except for me. Um, and that's we've got people staying over. And I just love it. It faces the garden. It gets the most gorgeous light in here throughout the day. The sun hasn't actually come round yet because it's still only eight o'clock in the morning. And because I feel so serene in here, I probably should have done this over lockdown, but I've decided that I'm going to make the pink room my kind of spa room, my, my, my very own little beauty salon, if you will. So I mentioned yesterday with my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle eye mask, which you might have seen I tried out for the first time last night. Um, it's really easy to fit. I think it'll be really easy to fit into my routine, whether I do it in the mornings or the evenings. Probably the evenings. Charlie actually has a longer evening skincare routine than I do. He faffs around loads, has a bath nearly every night. Um, so I have plenty of time in the evenings to just enjoy three minutes of the LED working its magic on my eye area. Um, so yeah, I guess it was really four or five years ago when I started going for facials. I think it's called the Light Clinic. Um, they have them in Harvey Nichols. They've got them all over London. And I always said, you'll be able to track back throughout my vlogs, that LED light facials really made such a difference to my skin and instant, no pain, nothing abrasive, just giving you that glow. And I really wanted to invest in having them more regularly, which is why I was really interested in getting the Current Body LED um, silicone face mask. I'll show you that shortly, just in case you've, just in case you're not sure what I'm talking about. However, this is a bit of a dream come true. So I have been working with Current Body for the last year or so and they have so insanely generously sent me to try out their Dermalux. The Dermalux Flex is this <laughs> this device here and this is what professional salons use. The lady that I go to locally um, for beauty treatments, she has one. The clinics that I used to go to in London, they all have them. This is literally the salon LED device but you can get it at home. It is a very expensive device. It's it's very, very expensive. However, if you, if you are a huge fan of LED facials, you really recognize the benefit of them. Or if you live in a household where multiple people could get use out of this, I know that I'm gonna be messaging my mum after this morning, um, seeing if she would like some LED facials. Whenever friends come over, I know that they're gonna wanna use this, but also, as well as it being incredible for your skin, mostly things like um, blemish reduction, the blue light is really good for really helping with any imbalances and any bacteria in the skin. Red light, of course, being the one for rejuvenating the skin for anti-aging benefits. Um, and then it's also got something which I believe is called NRI. I need to learn a little bit more about this other light that this one has, which is fantastic for muscle and joint pain. You can use it anywhere on the body. The most common thing is obviously to have it over your face and that's how I'll be using it. But I'll be also trying it on Charlie <laughs> later on today for his lower back pain. He's got a very intense workout regime at the moment. And the reason that he's having baths every day is because he has had quite sore muscles lately. And this is fantastic for that as well. So for our household, we have friends <laughs> coming over all the time for sleepovers. And I just think it's going to be such a lovely thing for both Charlie and I and my mum to make the most of, but also offering my friends. However, if you or any of your friends um, offer beauty treatments, I think you would earn the money back from this in maybe like in a couple of months, depending on how many clients you've got. Also, if and when we have um, like massages <laughs> done here at the house, we sometimes have sports massages done here, I will have my face getting light therapied with this while I'm having the body treatment. So this is actually my first time doing this myself at home. So I wanted to document it with you because I'm really excited to do this in my new at home beauty salon. I'm gonna store it in the chest of drawers just here. Okay, so here is the device. It literally took me a grand total of two minutes to set it up. No complicated instructions. It says on the website, this is the world's most popular in-clinic LED treatment. And obviously you can now get it at home, which is 
absolutely incredible. There are seven different treatments that you can do with this. You can either have red, blue, yellow, or a combination of like red and blue, red and yellow, or three, depending on what you're particularly targeting. And it's so easy, you literally can choose red, turn it on and it starts to glow, red, yellow, blue, turn it on. I don't know if my camera will like this um, and it'll turn all of the lights on for you. I'm gonna read a little bit of info from the website here. So it's got 360 LED bulbs with the red, um, red, blue, and near infrared. That's what the NIR stands for. Blue absorbed, blue light is absorbed into skin's first layer, triggering a natural reaction to destroy acne, causing bacteria to reduce breakouts. So if you've got teenagers in your household, this could be amazing, or if blemishes or acne is something that you suffer from. Blue light is clinically proven to significantly improve or clear mild to moderate acne by 76% after just four weeks. The next layer down, red light is absorbed, energizing the skin to promote faster repair and renewal, rejuvenating cells using targeted treatments for a host of concerns, including fine lines and wrinkles, redness, pigmentation, psoriasis, as well as muscular and joint pain, demonstrated to improve skin texture and smoothness by up to 79%. And then in the skin's deepest layer, the near infrared works to reduce inflammation, calm irritation and strengthen and strengthen the skin. So the main benefits of using a device like this, and I think this is three times stronger than any other at-home device that you can get. Effective treatment for skin concerns like acne, redness, pigmentation, signs of aging, scarring, large pores, and even skin tone, and also wider concerns on, bo on the body such as sports injuries, joint pain. Doesn't contain any harmful wavelengths or UV rays, so there's no damage to the skin non-invasive, no downtime, can be used by all skin tones and types. Very easy to use, switch it on, choose a light you'd like, position your body under the canopy, and relax for 30 minutes. So you can do this, realistically I'm probably gonna do this once a week, but I did watch a video where someone used it four times a week. As I said, during lockdown that might have been doable, but who knows, maybe I can find ways of putting it into my routine, because as you know, I'm always open for trying new things when it comes to my skincare. So, what does one do for 30 minutes while you're getting an LED light facial? Well, I'm going to listen to a podcast now. In the future, maybe I will listen to a 20 or 30 minute meditation. That's a really nice idea. I'm also, I'm also going to do a little bit of pampering. So, <laughs> sorry this is too much information, but with all the gardening and walking around both inside and outside barefoot, I've got quite <laughs> cracked heels at the moment, which is a little bit a little bit too much information, but I'm going to pop some of the Aveeno Skin Relief on my feet and put some cosy socks on so that can absorb while I'm getting my face um, beautified. And I'm also, this literally arrived a couple of days ago, it is the Tata Harper Body Re Resurfacing Body Serum. I like the sound of that. And you're meant to leave it on, leave it to absorb, and then apply your body lotion. So I thought I would have my body resurfacing, my feet hydrating. Ah, what can I do on my hands? I don't know. If you can think of any other things that you could do to be multitasking while you're under an LED light, let me know down below. But anyway, I'm so excited to do this, so let's get started. It also comes with this cushion to go under your head if you would like it. I hope you enjoyed that, no doubt, very fascinating time lapse. Can you imagine if I just left 30 minutes of me lying here with light on my face? Um, yeah, so I've just done 30 minutes underneath the Flex, Flex MD Dermalux, and I listened to a podcast called LED Light Therapy by um, two girls who have a podcast called Faddish, and it was really interesting. I've got another 10, well, 12 minutes left, which I'm going to listen to while I do my skincare and makeup. Um, but actually, I'll tell you what I learned from that in a second. I just want to show you how this collapses down. I'm going to, after listening to this podcast, I'm going to take this over to Lala, to my mum, 
and I'm going to get her to put her knee in it because, spoiler alert, one of the things that they said in the early days of developing these kind of systems, that it was used by the Army Navy SEALs for muscle recovery and injury recovery, so I think it'd be fantastic for Lala for her knee. There are very little, if any, side effects and it's obviously non-invasive, it's not going to be touching her knee, so that'll be fantastic. So I'm just gonna unplug it here. It obviously plugs into the wall, whereas, again, I'll show you my current body LED face mask um, that I have by my bedside table. The other one that I have is wireless, so you can literally walk around the house with it. This is like a little internet cable, which plugs in to your remote control. Get the cushion out, and then it literally just like slides out of its base and then this is the actual LED device so you can see it's flexible hence the name flex <laughs> and then you can keep it all in this carry case that it comes with honestly if I was a facialist or a beauty therapist I would feel so jazzy turning up with one of these so there we go, I've got everything in here. Normally I'm gonna keep it in this chest of drawers and this will be my Sunday pampas face. But I'm gonna quickly go and do my skincare and then I'm gonna take this over to Lala and pop it on her knee. Okay, my darlings, looking a little bit more normal now. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a rundown as to the things that I have learnt during my podcast session under the light. Long story short, I really wanna to stick to using this because the benefits are really well proven it's not just one of these fads which is what the whole podcast i was listening to was about so they test fads and see if they're legit or not using actual like medical research papers and not just what bloggers and youtubers say and things like that um but then i also watched a youtube video where two doctors were properly talking about the results the impacts and the longer term benefits of using led technology so to try to sum it up as quickly as possible and as bite-sized as possible the technology was actually initially developed by nasa so the little led light emitting di diodes diodes they were developed by nasa to actually encourage plants to grow in space. I'm going to do some research and see if I can use my Dermalux to grow my seedlings during the dark winter months. If NASA can do it in space, hopefully I can do it here in the Cotswolds. And then it was developed by the Navy SEALs for um, muscle uh, recovery and now is most commonly used within skincare clinics for the beauty effects. So the blue light penetrates um, the first layer, the epidermis of the skin, and it helps with those more topical things such as acne. That's the main benefit of the blue light. <laughs> We've got the church bell background music again um, and then the red light penetrates to the next layer down the dermis of the skin And I'm never gonna remember the scientific name, but it basically causes a reaction within the cells which produce collagen Collagen of course being very powerful for anti-aging makes the skin look plumper So it kind of plumps out those wrinkles and generally gives you healthier and younger looking skin if that is what you are hoping for, which I very much am. I'm in my 30s, uh, which is obviously by no means old. So at that layer, it's all about the repair and renewal of the skin. And then the near infrared light goes the next layer down again. And that really works to reduce inflammation, redness, and hopefully hyperpigmentation in the skin. That's what I'm hoping is gonna be another benefit for me. Um, so in this podcast, they were giving some like real life examples. You'll often find if you go for a facial that they will use red light or infrared light therapy at the end of the facial. If you've had any kind of treatment which aggravates the top of the skin like microneedling or if you're using retinols and acids and things like that, the LED light therapy can help to repair the skin which is why it's fantastic after a facial. One of the girls in the podcast said that she was using retinols for the first time and it really aggravated her skin um, and she literally went to see a dermatologist they put the light thing over her face for 45 minutes and she said the results afterwards were amazing so if any time in the future i try something and it aggravates my skin then i'm hoping that half an hour or so underneath my dermalux will help to repair and <laughs> relax my skin the doctors in the youtube video that i watched they were a little bit more um not critical because they were 
being a lot they were being a lot more thorough and they were saying that medical studies have literally proven the results of this they've even that there have even been studies where biopsies like little samples of skin have been taken and compared one side of the face that's had the light therapy and one side that hasn't and it's shown how much better the skin has been on the side that has had the light technology so after listening to those that one podcast and that youtube video Obviously, I'm going to do more research over time, but I am fully sold, fully sold, and I definitely want to do this, the Dermalux, at least once a week, but I am going to be keeping up as well with my mini, the one that I've had for mm, over a year now, and I mentioned last time I spoke about this that when I was asking my friends what was at the top of their Christmas lists last year, so many of them said this, and... Yeah, I've been using it for a long time, highly recommend. So the one that I used on the bed is, as I mentioned, very, very expensive. But if you do feel that you've got lots of uses for it, like the muscle, muscle recovery, um, if you do suffer from acne and if anti-aging is something that you really, really want to focus on, then it could be a really good investment. Equally, if you do like to go full facials that offer this as a paid for extra, again, could definitely be a worthwhile investment. But um, far more affordable, still an investment, but far more affordable is my current body LED light therapy mask. So this does the red lights and the infrared lights, so not the blue light. So this is really fantastic for anti-aging. You'll have seen me use this in the past. The fact that it's so flexible means it's really easy and comfortable to wear. You literally strap it on your face um, and then you can go about your daily errands. So if dedicating 20 minutes to half an hour is not something you can see yourself doing for your skin, then this could be a really good option for you. And the great thing is instead of being wall plugged in, it is wireless. So you literally click the button and it illuminates. I'm a huge, huge fan. Um, so I'm very, very grateful to Current Body for enabling me to try out the Dermalux. I'm now gonna take it over to Lala and pop it on her knee for those kind of repair benefits. And I will keep you posted with my journey with it because yeah, I'm fully, I'm very interested in how I can get in salon results and treatments at home and I feel like this is a bit of a game changer now that you can buy it at home. It's definitely the strongest way of getting LED light therapy at home, without a doubt. It is the exact same product that they use in clinics. So I will leave all the devices that I've spoken about linked down below in case you wanna do a little bit more research, add it to your wish list. Um, and if I do have the current body discount code, that'll all be detailed in the description box down below as well. <laughs> sure you'll be able to hear it in the background as it's very faint but I've just been watering um, and slightly feeding my pumpkins and courgettes using the Envy pre-flower and it is time for the Sunday morning church service and I can hear the choir singing and the organs playing. It's almost impossible to overfeed or overwater pumpkins and basically anything in the squash family uh, because they're such greedy little plants and some of these have got quite a few I don't know if you can see all of these yellow globes in there. I think this is actually a type of courgette. So I need to double check how big to let these get because with courgettes, the younger you pick them, the tastier they are. You don't want to let them get too big like I did last year. So I've been giving these a lovely feed with a very wonderful soundtrack coming from the church.
quite a few hours since I last spoke to you. Uh, since we did last catch up, we've been to Soho Farmhouse for pretty much the majority of the day. We met up with Leo, Leonora, and her lovely husband, Mark. It was our first time meeting Mark and really great to catch up with them both. We had a gorgeous long lunch outside at the Hay Barn. Um, I had a few glasses of the Lady K, not Lady A, Lady K Rose. And uh, yeah, it was a really gorgeous afternoon. I think I filmed a couple of clips, a little bit of B-roll down in the veg garden. And I couldn't wait to get back home and do a little bit of pottering around my own veg garden. So so as you might have just seen, I've done a little bit of veg garden admin. I've been stringing in my beans. Um, I think these are the purple French beans, so I've just added some strings as supports there. I've planted one of my tomato plants that was in a little pot. Um, because I'm going away next week, I'm keen to get as many things of, as possible in the ground so that hopefully they survive while I'm away. Um, and now I think I'm just gonna do a general tidy up of all of the beds and maybe plant some more seeds. Now that we are past the summer solstice, I can plant things like chicory um, and pak choy, bok choy, all the things that prefer shorter daylight hours. So I'm gonna have a little flick through my seed book and see what is good to be planted in July. Hello Dexy, have you come to help your mummy have you? Have you come to provide some assistance to your mother? Oh it's so lovely when you help me, it's so lovely. You're a lovely boy. Got the start of some little beans growing on my climbing beans here. I don't think unless these little tips here are going to eventually turn into beans. I'm not sure if this tomato plant is going to survive so I've added a slightly healthier looking one onto this stem as well. But we have got some runner beans starting to come through on this side and we have got our first artichoke of the season. When this gets a little bit bigger it'll be good for eating. We had fried artichoke with a lovely hummus before our meal at lunch today. So that's given me a little idea on how to make it. Seems funny, it's such a ginormous plant for such a small little thing to eat. <laughs> That'll be gone in one mouthful. <laughs> The next thing that I'm going to do this afternoon is to fill out my H&M clam vase. This is the vase that I see all over Instagram. Not going to lie, quality wise it's not really the best and it's kind of like a grey concrete -y colour. I thought it was going to be white um, but I'm sure I can make it look absolutely beautiful. I think because of the shape it definitely needs chicken wire to support the blooms inside. So what I'm going to do is probably film a little video putting this display together for TikTok. <laughs> That's where most of my flower content goes these days. So I'll leave you on a little hyperlapse so you can see behind the scenes. go five minutes of flower arranging later and I actually love how this looks with a mixture of alcamilla the daisies from the wildflower area some catmint some alliums and some of the Annie Magus I think this one is called this is definitely one of my favorites so I filmed all of that in detail on my tiktok which you can go and check out um, but yeah actually the vase does a lot makes a really good display with actually a fairly small amount of blooms so a really nice way of displaying some of the wildflower 